Okay, so let's talk about making a portfolio. So some of you may have uh, heard of a portfolio before, some of you may not have. Um, this is something that can really enhance your uh, job interview. Uh, it's not something that's always mandatory at a job interview, but it really, really can separate you from the rest of the pack. Um, so let's take you through how to make a portfolio and what it is and the things you're going to need, stuff like that. Okay, so just some basics about a portfolio. Um, a portfolio is a way for you to really brag about yourself in another way at a job interview. Um, a portfolio usually is some kind of binder that uh, can be used as examples of how awesome you are. So in a job interview, usually you talk about your awesomeness, but in a portfolio, it's a way to also show your awesomeness in addition to uh, answering someone's questions. So if someone says, um, you know, if you're, if you're talking about continuing education or something like that, and you've already done some CE courses, you can show them the CE certificates that you've already done them. Um, if you're talking about being interested in a certain uh, field or topic, you can show them the research papers or, um, you know, treatment plans that you've already created based on, on those conditions and things like that. So things that usually go inside a portfolio are your resume, uh, some certifications or awards that you've gotten, um, so certifications can include your CPR card, um, some students put their clearances in there, um, things like that. Uh, writing samples definitely go in there. Um, pictures of community service uh, and letters of recommendation. So I have had several students who have made the portfolio in our class and have gone out on job interviews and the interview panel or person has been really surprised and impressed by the portfolio. Um, and I had one student say they got the job because they went with a portfolio and nobody else did. So it's not always a necessity in uh, nursing, but it's a really, really good way to set yourself apart. So everything in your portfolio has to be perfect. Um, it has to be neat and it has to be typed. So if you are someone who is very uh, OCD or very uh, attention to detail, this will be great for you. Um, the thing is that you need to be really, really careful when arranging your portfolio. So it should be arranged in a logical order, but it needs to be arranged in an order that you'll, you'll remember. Because when you're in a job interview, you want to be able to immediately, quickly flip to a certain tab uh, without any hesitation. Because then that shows you actually know what you've created. So every single document that's going to go in this portfolio is going to go in a page protector. Every section that is in the portfolio will be tabbed. Um, and then you will also need to put a cover sheet after the tab explaining um, the section that's coming after it. So for example, for your community service tab, um, if you're gonna use pictures to show community service that you did, you're gonna want a little blurb right before that on a piece of paper explaining what is in those pictures. Because as an outsider, if I just look at the pictures, I'm not gonna know what I'm looking at. So you don't really wanna put originals in this. You should just use photocopies and you want to make sure that your design is uniform through the whole thing. So here are things that you're going to need to get to be able to make this. And it, it doesn't really matter how different they are. You can totally let your personality come through in this portfolio. But you do want to keep it reasonably professional. Um, so I would get a binder. Uh, an 8.5 by 11 binder is fine. Um, as far as thickness goes, whether it's one inch, two inch, three inch, that's really going to depend on how much stuff you have to put in it. And the idea is that right now your portfolio might be tinier, but as you grow through your profession, you add things to it and it, it, it gets bigger. So I would say probably a one to two inch uh, binder would be enough for right now. 
Um, when you get the binder, make sure that it has uh, one of those clear sheets on the cover so that you can stick a piece of paper in it because we're going to put a cover sheet right on the front of the binder. Um, you're going to need clean page protectors. So page protectors that you may have at home um, that you set the coffee cup down on that have coffee rings or that are all crinkled and bent are not going to work very well for you. Um, and honestly, you can even split this up among the class. Uh, usually if you go to the dollar store or Walmart or something like that, page protectors, um, some of them can come in packages of, you know, 250 or 100 or something like that. Um, so, you know, maybe two or three of you can buy packages and then split them up among the class. Uh, you will also need tabbed dividers. Um, and some students complain that they look for dividers um, and then when they close their binder, the dividers don't stick out. So I would look at the measurements. So if you're going to buy a binder that's eight and a half inches, that means it's eight and a half inches wide. So you would want a divider that might be 10 by 11 uh, if you can find them out there. And as far as the dividers, it doesn't matter what color they are, you can choose white ones, You can there's yellow ones, there are different color plastic ones, um, it really doesn't matter what kind of divider you pick. Um, but the name of the divider is going to be typed, so you can do this, um, I, sometimes people just take a Microsoft Word document and type the names of the sections and then tape them right on, um, but, and you want when you're looking at the divider, you want my head to tip to the right to be able to read uh, what section that divider is is leading into. Um, you need to have access to a printer, so you can definitely print stuff here uh, at school, in the library, and in the computer lab, and if you run into any issues printing with page counts, things like that, then you just tell whoever is giving you an issue that you're doing it for me, and I will take it up with them. Um, this portfolio does not have to be color at all. That is totally your prerogative. Um, but just know that we don't have any color printers on campus. So if you do want things in color, then that might be uh, something you have to do at home or elsewhere. But we're looking to do this as inexpensively as possible for you. So oh, speaking of binders, if you have one at home already and it's in good condition, Use the one that you already have. You don't have to go buy another one, um, just as long as it's in decent condition. So here are some examples of what this thing looks like. So some people do e-portfolios. Um, so for example, as a journalist, I have an e-portfolio. So all of my work samples and things like that are organized on a DVD that I would mail out to newspapers. Um, I also have one that looks like this. So this is an 11 and a half by 14. Um, I have one of these from when I was a journalist because I needed something bigger to put all of my designs into. But for teaching, I also have one of these, which is just a binder. Um, you'll notice if you look, I wonder if I could zoom this in for you. Oh, da -da -da -da, I guess I can. Crap. <laughs> Oh, I'm totally messing up my PowerPoint. I just want you to see this picture down here. So here's a binder. This is a leather binder. You don't have to get that fancy. Um, but it does have uh, the clear sheet on the front. But notice how this one has the tabs sticking out. Some of these binders that you might purchase might already come with these tabbed dividers. Um, it really depends on, on what you're looking for and what you're going to buy. Um, but we've talked about there being a cover sheet on the front. So you want the cover sheet basically to look like this. So it needs to have your name on it and it needs to have your contact information, which is your address, your phone number, and your email address. Now, this is wire-bound because someone actually took separate pages and went to, like, Staples or something like that and had it bound like this. To do something like this costs money, so it's a whole lot cheaper to just get a binder and slide a piece of paper in the front of it 
that has this information on it. So that's going to be your cover sheet. Now, some people do like to put pictures on their cover sheets. You'll notice there's a picture over here. Um, you can get creative with your cover sheet, but remember you are making this portfolio for right now. So you are not allowed to call yourselves LPNs yet because you are not licensed. So it's better to just put your name and not put any degrees with it or anything like that. How are we doing so far? See, at least here you can pause me and you can walk away and in class you can't. So let's look at what's in this thing. And what I'm going to do is we're going to go through these sections one by one in the slides that come after this. Um, so don't panic. Um, the very first thing that's going to be in your binder is the table of contents. But this should be the very last thing that you actually create. So what that means is as soon as I open the front cover of the binder, I am looking at a piece of paper that says table of contents. And it tells me what elements are on what page in your uh, portfolio. So every single page in this portfolio needs a page number. Now. Some people, the thing is you want to put page numbers and the table of contents last. You want to assemble this whole thing first. Um, so page numbers, some people buy um, stickers at like AC Moore that have numbers and that's what they use as page numbers. Some people handwrite it with a Sharpie. Uh, some people use a label maker. I don't care what you do to get page numbers on there as long as they look neat and they look professional because this is representing you. So if it looks like you just slapped the thing together within five minutes, then that's going to speak to you as an employee that you're not going to take care of um, or pay attention to what you're doing and you're just going to get it done to get it done. Um, so after the table of contents, there will be a tab that will have your resume. And your resume is something that we're going to create in this class. So your resume will go next. Uh, that does not need one of those cover sheets to explain what I'm looking at, because that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the career goals we are going to skip over um, because you're a little too young in your career to be able to write one of these. And I don't mean that offensively. Um, I mean that as a way to protect you from this possibly going wrong. So right after your resume, your next tab is going to be your list of references, which we are also going to make. Um, so again, this one also does not need a cover sheet explaining what the element is. So you will have your tab that says list of references. And when I flip the tab, there will be your list of references in a, a page protector. The next thing to come that will also be in a separate tab is your transcripts. Now, you want to include transcripts from any school that you have finished, so any college that you have finished. You do not need high school transcripts, um, but let's say you completed another degree here at Fortis, or maybe you completed a degree somewhere else. You will want to include those transcripts. For here, um, you can actually print your transcripts right from your campus portal um, and, and put them together. So for this one, again, it'll say transcripts on the tabbed divider, and then you just can include the transcripts in the page protectors. You don't need to have a sheet explaining what those elements are. The next tab, so if you're keeping count, I'm up to four tabs already. Your next tab is your work samples, and this is going to be your biggest section uh, in this portfolio. It's also going to be one of the most important sections in the portfolio, um, and we're going to talk about this in a couple slides. Your next tab would be any awards or honors that you've received, so perfect attendance, um, dean's list, um, if any teachers have given you awards, any clinic sites have given you awards, um, this, this can also be awards that you've earned outside of, uh, school. So if you're, um, and if you, you're also an EMT or you're a volunteer firefighter or, you know, you coach softball or something like that, and they've given you a coach of the year award or something like that, 
those can go in this section as well. Your next tab is going to be community service, and this is mandatory. So if you look at the grading rubric that goes along with this, uh, you lose big points if you do not have a community service section in here. Um, because you have done community service throughout your entire schooling. So community service is going to be a little difficult because each of you may have done different things. So you're going to have a tab that says community service, and then this section will need um, little cover sheet blurbs, so a Microsoft Word document with a little paragraph explaining what the community service was. And things to show community service can be pictures of you actually doing the community service, uh, flyers, um, it can be um, letters from places that you did things for. So maybe if you guys hosted a blood drive, um, one of you can get a letter from the American Red Cross validating that you actually did do that, and then you can copy it for everyone who was involved. Um, if you took part in the Susan G. Komen um, walk that was sponsored by Cohort 6, um, if you any of those things is community service. Now, this also is not limited to community service that you've done in school. So if you do community service outside of school, again, let's say you volunteer, you're a volunteer coach or, um, you know, something like that. If you can get a letter from the organization proving that you do volunteer your time there, then that can go in the community service section. The final section um, is letters of reference. So the final section is going to be letters that you receive from people talking about how awesome you are. And letters of reference are a little bit difficult to wrap your head around, so we're going to talk about them in a couple slides. Um, so if you kept count so far, that was seven tabs. So when you're shopping, you will need at least seven tabs. Now, some people choose to add extra tabs into their binder um, with their clearances um, and to put in their CPR card, um, all of their clearances, their TB test, their immunizations and stuff like that. Totally up to you. Um, anything extra that you want to put in this would be fine, but this is the minimum that I'm looking for. Okay. So let's go on to table of contents. So because this is um, a portfolio, even though you have dividers in it, you do want to help the, the person looking through it um, by helping them navigate through the portfolio in more detail than just the tabs. Um, again, like we talked about, you want to do the table of contents last, but this needs to have the element and it needs to have the page number. Um, so it cannot just say resume, tab one, cover tab two, references, tab three. No, it needs to have a page number that that tab starts on. Um, you can also break your table of contents down into a lot of detail, um, especially for the um, work samples section, for the awards section, for the letters of reference section. Um, so you have a lot of leeway with this. Some people choose to de design their table of contents. Um, so like, let's say they get colored tabs. So if you look at the picture in the corner, so this third tab is purple. Um, this third tab would be resume, list of references, transcripts. So you would put transcripts on your table of contents and what page they start on, and you might put it in a purple bar or you might put it in purple ink so that the purple corresponds with the colored tab. You don't have to do that by any means. Um, if you are, though, just be careful of lighter things. So yellow is not going to print well. Uh, orange is not going to print well unless you do it as a shaded bar. And if these are things that you want to do but you don't quite know how to format, then just let me know and I can help you out in Microsoft Word. Uh, the resume, we're going to go through specifically how to do a resume in far more detail in a separate PowerPoint. Um, so I don't want to spend too much time on this. Um, but you're only going to put one resume in a clean page protector. 
uh, inside your portfolio. You will be bringing extra copies of your resume with you uh, to the, the job interview itself so that you can pass them out to whoever might be in the room, but you only need one copy in your resume. Um, another question that I get a lot is your cover letter. You, you're going to be writing a cover letter, and a cover letter is something that you send with your resume in advance that gets you the interview. So since the cover letter gets you the interview, you do not need the cover letter inside your portfolio because it's assumed that the people you're interviewing with have already read the cover letter. Um, even though I just said that and kind of contradicted myself, even though they would have seen the resume in advance, uh, the resume is a great way to keep continue to continue to sell yourself. That's why you want to bring other copies. Um, this career goals slide, it is an optional component. Um, like I said, at this stage of the game, I don't mean this in an insulting way, but I just really don't think that um, you'll need this section. And to be honest, there has been nobody who has tried it so far. Um, your career goals is a way to show off your written communication skills. It's kind of like a mini essay. And basically it's a where do you see yourself in 10 years kind of a thing. Um, you talk about your short-term goals, your long-term professional goals. At this point, if your only goal is to get a job, then you don't have enough information to write one of these things, which is why I'm saying to skip this. Because pretty much with where you're at, everybody is just at the, oh my God, I just want a job. I just need a job. I need to pay the bills. I've been in school too long. Um, so if you're one of those people, which is fine, don't do one of these because it won't do you any good. Okay, your list of references. We are also going to talk about your list of references in a separate uh, PowerPoint um, because there is some, some detail, some design, some formatting that goes along with this. Um, but for now, you want uh, three to five people to be on your list of references. And a list of references literally is a list just of their contact information. Um, fewer than three people looks like uh, you don't really have anybody who can help you out. More than five looks a little braggy. Um, and I, we're going to go over how to pick references, who to choose, things like that. Um, this list of references, you need one copy inside a page protector. But just like with the resumes, you're also going to bring multiple copies in a separate folder or something like that. Uh, transcripts, I think I pretty much covered when we were uh, in the earlier slide. Again, for Fortis, you can print them off your campus portal for right now. Um, you don't need any transcripts from high school or GEDs or earlier than that, just colleges. Um, and it's only colleges that you've completed. You don't want to include things you haven't completed because then uh, on paper alone, it could look like you're a quitter or you don't finish things you start or things like that. Um, so these transcripts can show your employer future coursework. So are you ever going to need your transcripts in a job interview? Maybe, maybe not. Um, if you're the student who is juggling the family, uh, school, uh, all this other stuff, and you've been able to maintain a 4.0, then showing off that transcript might be a really, really advantageous thing for you or a really, really good thing. Okay, work samples. This is what we really need to talk about. Work samples, this is what's going to probably take you the most time, and this is just a matter of collecting stuff. You do not have to create anything new for this section, but it's for this section that you're really going to need to take your flash drive, go through your emails, stuff like that, and print out everything that you have created from the beginning of this program. So this might also take some brainstorming with your classmates to look at every class you've taken and think of the projects that you've done. So uh, if you were in my English class, every essay that you wrote should be printed and go in this uh, portfolio. If you were in my informatics class, assignment one was a paper on informatics. Assignment two was an outline. 
Um, and assignment three was the presentation. So you can include the paper, the outline, and then you can include a picture of the tri board that you created for the presentation. Um, treatment plans that you've created, pamphlets, brochures for patients, um, any paper that you've done, any PowerPoint that you've created. So some of you had Dr. Mugaka for nutrition and had to create a PowerPoint. Um, some of you may have had nutrition class and had to cook a food and you took a picture of the food that you cooked with the nutrition information. All of that stuff can go in here. Anything that you are going to use pictures for should include an explanation of what the picture is and what I'm looking at. And the photos should actually be printed on photo paper, not um, printer paper, because then they'll get all distorted and they'll get pixelated. So if you're going to print out a paper, so let's say for my English class, you did a five-page paper, you do not have to put each of those five separate pages in five separate page protectors. You can staple the paper and slide it into one page protector. And you can also put things back to back in this section. So if you want to put uh, your process essay first and then in the same page protector but back to back you want to put your informative paper, that's absolutely fine. Um, so the idea behind this section is that you can illustrate and you can show someone the work that you've already done in this profession. Um, and this section is really, really lucrative for you, especially because you're right out of school. So you can show someone, yeah, even though I'm right out of school, look at all the stuff I've already done so far. Look at all the research I've done. Look at the citations that I know how to do um, and things like that to further my education. So this is going to be your biggest section, and this is going to take you the longest to put together, uh, only because it's a matter of figuring out where stuff is. Um, if you are someone who did not save your work, go through emails, because especially for me, you know I return items through email. Um, you can look to, uh, um, you know, you could ask some teachers if they might still have your assignments, but that might not be a good route to go because it's your responsibility to have these. Um, so start thinking now of all the classes that you've had. Okay, uh, we're about halfway through, and the rest of this won't take much longer. So awards and honors, again, we talked about this uh, in an earlier slide. Um, if high school was a long time ago for you, you should not be including anything from high school. So what I mean by a long time ago is about five years. If you got awards in high school and it's been fewer than five years that you've been in high school, first of all, I'm jealous. Uh, second of all, yes, you can include those things. Um, but a lot of the honors would be stuff that you've gotten from here. Um, perfect attendance, clinical certificates, high honors, dean's list, things like that. If you're sitting there going, I never got any awards, Cindy can probably print these out for you. However, you need to start collecting this information now. So if you look at when your portfolio is due, if you ask for these items two days prior to the deadline, you're not going to get them. Um, and I tell every single class this, you all know how much Cindy will do for you. You know how busy the woman is, but that she will get what you need. So you just need to make sure that you ask her early enough and that you're specific in what you need. So if you need copies of your clearances, if you need copies of community outreach you've done, if you need copies of your awards or honors, then you need to make sure you ask her in more than enough time. Um, and what she's done in the past is that she puts a packet together for everybody. Um, and give her a deadline earlier than when your portfolio is due to me. So the idea behind you watching this is that I can then answer questions once we're together. So hopefully as you're, you're thinking of questions, you're jotting them down. So this way when I see you next, I can answer them. Or you could just email me a slew of all of these questions. Um, 
If you don't have any perfect attendance, high honors, if you don't have any awards from outside of school, it does not mean you suck. It does not mean you're a loser. It's totally okay to not have this section yet. Um, so if you don't have any of these things, you are allowed to omit this section or to leave this section out. Community service. We talked about this a bit. You are not allowed to leave this out because you will lose points for it if you do. Um, again, you can do uh, outreach that is connected to the school or outreach that is not. Um, but you should all have this element because doing community service was a uh, requirement of your graduation. So you have to start thinking of things that you guys participated in. So basically things you did for other people that were free is what you're looking for. So you can include pictures, brochures, flyers. Um, you can include letters from sites where you've done outreach. And it's really going to be this section where you're going to need one of those cover sheets to explain what the community outreach is. Because if I'm a, if I'm a reader and I'm just looking at the flyer, it, it doesn't have any context for me. So you need to give me something in front of it with a little, you know, couple sentences explaining what I'm looking at. And that enhances this section quite a bit. Testimonials. Um, in the, I think it's the letters of recommendation PowerPoint, we're going to talk about these, but testimonials and letters of recommendation, letters of reference, they all mean the same thing. But these are letters that people have written on your behalf to explain how awesome you are. So, um, you need at least one letter of recommendation from each person on your list of references. So if you have four people listed on your list of references, then you need at least one letter from each, which would be four, in this section. So um, you need testimonials from, you can pick teachers, myself included. Um, you can pick, um, maybe there have been nurses at clinical sites that uh, have been really helpful, um, school people, patients, things like that. Um, in the letter of recommend, in the, I believe it's the list of references PowerPoint, um, I do have a little template that you could use when you're asking for these letters. Um, because basically, if you're going to have three or four people, you want them all to focus on something different so that when we put these letters together, um, it's, it's a more all-encompassing view of who you are. So for example, I don't know you guys as nurses. I've never worked with you as nurses in any cl clinical capacity, but I am the only teacher in the department who had you at the very beginning and now has you at the end and sees the growth all the way through uh, the, the entire length of the program. Um, so I could speak to that, but I can't speak to you as a nurse, whereas one of the other clinical instructors could speak to how you are as a nurse. And then you can have um, a current boss or even a classmate talk about your work ethic and punctuality and things like that. But you have to decide what each person is going to talk about for you. Um, and giving them some background information about you helps a lot. So again, I have a little template for you that you can uh, follow. And actually, hang on a second. I just want to make sure it's in the it's in this other PowerPoint. Yes, it is. Okay, so we'll talk about that when we get later on. I have a template that you could use. Um, so more on some testimonials. You can also include, if you've received letters or thank you cards or anything like that from your clinical sites or from patients or anything like that, you can include those in here. Uh, the letters of recommendation themselves um, from professionals, so from teachers, from bosses, program directors, blah, 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 uh, they should be typed, hand-signed, and dated. And you do want them to put their full names, their... Um, credentials, which are the letters after their names, 
um, their titles and things like that to boost their credibility. Um, because So, for example, my stuff is written below. Um, if you just include my name, sure, it looks fine. But once you start throwing letters after my name, I suddenly look like I'm a whole lot more awesome than I actually am. So those letters give me some credibility. So you want, um, you know, it, maybe you'll ask Miss G or something like that. Um, you know, she has a bachelor's, uh, Miss Stout has a master's, um, but they're all RNs. So you want all of those letters after their name. Then you want their official title here at the school. Um, and those are things you have to ask them for. You can't just assume what they are. Because um, if you notice, even in my credentials, there are certain things that are capitalized and lowercase and have uh, punctuation and things that don't. And there are reasons for that. So make sure you ask your reference for these things. And again, we'll talk about it more in the list of references PowerPoint. Okay, we're almost done, I promise. So these are just some suggestions, and most of these we've already talked about. Um, on average, it takes about three weeks to collect all this information and compile it and put it together. Please do not wait until the very end. When you are asking people for things, so we mentioned asking Cindy for help or when you're asking people for letters of recommendation, make sure you give them an earlier deadline. So, for example, if your portfolio is due to me uh, on May 14th, then you should be asking your for stuff to be given to you by May 1st. So this way, if someone doesn't give it to you by May 5th, you're still okay and you're not panicking. Um you want to make sure everything is perfect. So one of the reasons why we talk about this first, but it's due last, is so that we have enough time to perfect the stuff that's going to go in it. Um, so if you have a typo on one of your dividers um, or your table of contents, or if you punctuate your own address wrong um, on the, the front cover of the portfolio, we have an issue. Um, so again, remember on these dividers, you want my head to tip to the right to be able to read it. Uh, some people have tried to put the name of the divider vertically, um, but for it, it comes out a little weird. If you're able to do it, hey, more power to you, go for it. Um, but you just want them all in the same, all going in the same direction. Okay, so we made the portfolio but now it's about using it. So now what? Uh, you always want to make sure that you bring the portfolio to the interview. Um, I, When I was on job hunts, even though I was working in another place, I always kept my portfolio in my car. I kept a separate folder that had tons of extra copies of my resumes and my letters of, of uh, my list of references. And I always kept an ironed suit in a garment bag laid out across my trunk with dryer sheets in it. So if someone called me and wanted me to go for an interview, I had everything I already needed in my car. And I didn't have to say, well, no, I can't come at one because I got to run home and change and blah, 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 because you might lose the opportunity. So you want to make sure you know this portfolio inside and out. You want to know what you have in there. You want to know what your letters of reference say about you um, because you want to be able to flip to this information automatically and immediately for the people. Um, if you don't know what's in your portfolio or you can't find something that's in it, it makes you look disorganized. And we want to present the absolute best side of yourself. So one common complaint is that they didn't even look at the portfolio. So, so often you walk into a job interview, you sit down, the portfolio is on your lap, the whole interview is over, you walk out, and they didn't even look at the, the portfolio. They didn't ask to look at it. Um, the other bad thing is if you give it to them and they blindly flip through it really quickly, but they're looking at you or looking around the room and they're not even looking at the portfolio. Um, another thing that used to aggravate the crap out of me personally, when I went on a job interview, um, for my journalism, there were some 
um, layout designs I was unbelievably proud of. And when I would give them my portfolio, they would skip right past it and they wouldn't pay as much attention to it as I wanted them to. Um, another thing that can happen is you ask them if they want to look at your portfolio and they just flat out say no. Um, all of these things happen because of you. So you have control over these, what, five bullet points not happening. So here are some little techniques for you with the portfolio. The first thing you want to do is when you walk in, instead of leaving the portfolio on your lap, um, you can ask if it's okay if uh, you give it to them and set it on the table in front of them. Um, another great thing to do is when you're answering interview questions, uh, work in something from your portfolio. So you can say, well, for example, um, and then you can stand up and approach the binder and actually flip to that section for them and show them what you want them to see. So um, flipping through your portfolio for them is fantastic. You know you can flip past the resume, you can flip past the transcripts, you can flip past the list of references because they're going to be asking you for that. So you're mainly going to want to focus on the stuff in your work samples, your community service, your awards, things like that. So you want to be able to jump right to those things and provide a very smooth explanation for what they're looking at and how it can benefit you in that position or benefit them. So that's why knowing your portfolio is really important. So the final thing is just be hungry. And I wrote this PowerPoint when I was hungry. So don't make fun of me, but uh, I know be hungry sounds a little corny, but basically all I mean is want this and show that you want this. So if you are proactive and you do all the things that you need to do, then you're hungry for that job. You want that job. So if it looks like you don't care, if it looks like you didn't put any effort into this portfolio or you don't make one at all, um, if it looks like you just slapped the thing together and you were lazy, then you're not going to get the job. Unfortunately, when it comes to job searches and interviews, it's all about appearances. It's all about how you look in black and white on a resume, how you look in black and white on a portfolio, and how you look and how you present yourself in an interview. So the portfolio, this is going to be something, like I said, it's going to take about three weeks for you to put together. So you need to really start thinking, especially about the work samples, about the awards, um, and about your uh, references. You need to start thinking of those immediately. If there are things that you need from Cindy, you need to email her like today Tell her specifically what you would be looking for. And again, give her a deadline that's about a week or two earlier than when you actually have to turn this in to me. So this way, you know, if she runs a little behind, it doesn't put you in a bind of any sort. Now, I am here to help you with anything that I possibly can. So if you need anything, don't ever hesitate to send me an email. Um, so that we can, or we can talk about this in class. Hopefully you've jotted down questions, um, but I'm here to help you through this. So even if it's not during class time and you have some things in your portfolio and you want to bring it up to the office, don't ever hesitate. That's what I'm here for. Um, I just want to make sure we get you set up as perfectly as possible for when you hit that job market. I hope this helped. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.